Welcome to another episode of the Bakari Sellers Podcast. Today, it's special because it's not um, often you get to interview somebody who uh, you grew up being a fan of, but today I get to interview none other than the infamous, famous, legendary, <laughs> all, all things, University of Texas superstar, just pure icon when it comes, and I would argue um, the best running back in the history of college football, Ricky Williams. What's going on, brother? Wow, thank you, thank you. You know, my my favorite um, my favorite title is uh, infamous. Infamous, okay. <laughs> I, I I would go with probably more misunderstood than infamous, but you are you are a true legend, brother. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, we usually start each one of our episodes by having our guests walk us through the arc of their career, but I think most folks know about your career in football, but they may not be as familiar with what you've been doing since you left the NFL in 2011. Talk about your various stops in coaching, yoga instructing, football commentary, and cannabis since leaving the NFL. Walk us through how you've navigated your life after football. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'll start with the decision to, uh, to retire. Um, so I retired in 2012 uh, after one year with, uh, with the Baltimore Ravens and um, got to this point where I was 34 and we, we just missed the Super Bowl by a, a missed field goal. And Baltimore was, an, you know, a new opportunity for me late in my career. And it was, a, it was really exciting. And so I was really excited about coming back at 35. And I got a text from Bill Parcells telling me, you know, don't chase this thing too long. You can contribute in other ways. And it, and it hit me like a brick because, <laughs> you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't expect that from him. And it got me thinking and I realized, you know what? There are other things that I can do. And then I realized there are a whole lot of other things that I'm interested in. Why not pursue those things? And so, you know, we, we lost to the Patriots on Saturday and on that Wednesday, um, I was in my first postseason class. You know, it was one of those things after I retired in 2004, every off season, I feel the off season taking classes, educating myself, you know, anything I was interested in. And so I just kept learning and learning. And as soon as I was done playing football, I just jumped into what else I can learn, what else I can learn. And one of the things about learning, acquiring information pretty soon, you need to do something with that information. So I trans, I translated into teaching, whether that was through coaching, teaching yoga, uh, teaching astrology, um, and, and that's really been my really been my passion is is healing and, and educating. And you know, in my own life, I had to heal a lot from playing football. And I'm just a curious person, so I've always been educating myself. Man, that's a dope trajectory. I hope a lot of people hear you because I've always said we always have to have this insatiable desire to learn as much as possible when we stop learning then we're actually dying so you you've definitely and you're not only learning but you're educating others I, I before we get into cannabis and professional sports some of the things we're here to talk about today I can't have Ricky Williams on this podcast and not ask how you feel about Texas joining the SEC what's your take on that move and how do you think Texas would have fared in the SCC when you were at Texas? So we, um, it's funny, my whole time at Texas, I think we only played one, one game against the SCC team. And it was, uh, it was my last game. It was in the Cotton Bowl against Mississippi State. And, and, and we beat them up pretty good. So it's, it's different. The SEC back then it was, is not the SEC that it is that it is now. You know, you had the good teams, but there was only a few of them. Now, I think across the board, the SEC is 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 tough. Um, but but I was excited because I think right now the best football in in the country is played in the SEC, and I think if yeah. Texas wants to consider themselves the best, they have to play against the best. And I and I think it'll give us a boost in recruiting, and it'll really allow us to go after players that that want to play with the best. So I, I'm I'm excited about it. How's Sark doing, in your opinion? I think he's doing great. I think he's doing wonderful. And, you know, for me, especially the first year of a coach, I, I judge um, culture. If I see a culture change, then I, I then I know okay, he's off to a good start. And when I watch the Texas guys play, the difference this year from the past couple of years is they're having fun. You know, and, and they're making plays, you know, finishing the game, you know, that that's 
that takes time. That takes time sometimes, but they're <laughs> playing around and, and they're fun to watch. So I'm I'm happy with what he's doing. Man, I'm going to that Red River shootout. I, I am a big sports fan. I've never been to one, but after watching this year and the last few have been just completely epic. As you hear my dog going crazy in the background. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm going to one of those Red River shootouts. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just a warning. It's old school. I mean, there's no box. There's no boxes and it's Texas and it's usually October. So it's hot. So just, you know, it's just <laughs> just be ready. So before we get into your new business venture, Heisman, I wanted to zoom out a bit and first acknowledge the pioneering role that you played in elevating medical cannabis use, normalization and legalization far before it was popular or legalized. Can you talk a little bit about how you were first introduced to cannabis and how you came to see cannabis as central to your recovery and wellness as an athlete? Yeah, um, so I was first introduced to it in, uh, in high school. But it didn't it didn't really catch, you know, I, I was really focused on on sports and, uh, and it was it was high school. And then I got to college and some of the guys on the team smoked. And so it was it was around more. And so I, I used it a couple of times in college, but it wasn't until my senior year that it really stuck. And uh, I just was had a had a rough game. I was having some rough stuff going on in my personal life. And my friend suggested that I smoke and you know, I, I was like, okay. And, and I noticed something, I noticed that I wasn't obsessing about the game or about my girl and, and I could sleep. And so, you know, I became a kind of a fan. And so then I would use it occasionally just, you know, just to chill out sometimes. Uh, and then fast forward a couple of years, I was playing in new Orleans and things got really stressful. I was banged up and I just started smoking more. And again, at the, the, the conversation around it was just, that's just what the guys do after practice. And it was more of like a recreational thing, but you know, I, I was receiving benefits and then I got traded to Miami and I had more free time and, you know, that's some good, some good flower down there. And so I was just, after practice, I would just come and chill. And I just, you know, I remember just sitting on my balcony, smoking, at, looking at the ocean and just like envisioning, you know, leading the NFL and rushing, you know, is it, you know, the, like a new, a new town, a new situation, you know, and I was just in that groove and then the season started and that's when I fell my first drug test. Because in New, or in New Orleans, we got drug tested once a year. All NFL teams get drug tested once a year. But in, in New Orleans, it was in the in training camp. I got traded to Miami and nobody, nobody told me. I didn't, get the, I didn't get the memo, but they get, they get tested in, all, in the off season. And so I came to work one day and the guy was like, all right, it's time for the piss test. And I was like, what? And so I ended up, <laughs> I ended up getting in the drug program. And once you get in the drug program, you get tested nine times a month. And then you have to go see a, a, a psychiatrist once a week. And so, you know, I, I was like, all right, I guess I'm pop, no big deal. You know, it's something I do to chill. So I'll be good. And so I started going to see the, the therapist talking to him. And I was like, you know, it was always nice to have someone to talk to. And I was on, I was on Paxil dealing with social anxiety. So I was like, I was like, I was down with that. But then after a while going through the season, you know, I started to be like, hmm, you know, what if I just smoked a little bit? I wonder what that would do. And so I would take a, you know, take a hit right after a test because I knew I'd probably be clean to, to, for the next test. And I noticed that it was nice, you know, that I missed it. You know, it was part of my routine for how I, how I recovered after, after work and then was able to go out and do it again. And it got to the point where I didn't want to play football without it because it, it, it just made it so much easier. And so I started finding ways to smoke and, and, still, pass the, and still pass the test. Um, and then, you know, once once I got popped for real and, and I was going to get suspended, I said, OK, it's not worth it. There's other things that I want to do. And so I walked away from football and started to travel. And one of the questions that was on the back of my mind was there's something about this plant that that, you know, I risk my whole I risk my whole you know livelihood for. And I got curious. And so I started studying the plant and, and learning all I could. And it, it's it it's blown my mind what I found and you know and it's been used medicinally for thousands of years but even before that and I think more importantly it was used spiritually um and, and I mean in in layman's terms you know spiritual is just that you're good with your life you know that you're happy to me that that's the whole point of spirituality is that you can handle the things that come to you and you feel good about your life okay and and not and and it helps you connect to some some greater purpose okay and it's been used like that for thousands of years and i found you know through all my research and my personal experience 
that's 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 what I love about the plan. You know, it helps me connect to something greater. How did you pass those drug tests? Well, I mean, I'm a creative person. So. <laughs> I had to ask the follow-up because that jumped out at me. You were like, I didn't get caught. I figured out how to play and smoke. Yeah. So part, part of it was timing, you know, part of it was timing because when you're not, when you're not around it and people just say drug test, you know, you get drug tested randomly. Most people just say, I'm not messing with it. You know, I'm not messing with it, but I had to mess with it. So I did my research, you know, and so <laughs> little experimentation, you know, I, I found I could take three hits. Okay. I could take three hits and pass a, a test the next day, okay? That was my like, that was my sweet spot, okay? It took, <laughs> took me a while to, to figure that out, but that was my sweet spot. The first half of my career, I just went to the head shop and they had this drink called Extra Extra Clear, okay? And if you follow the instructions and, and drink it right, your, your piss is clear for five hours and you can pass the test. And so, um, and I should start a website or a service, if you, you know, People that are still being drug tested, like you, you should. I mean, that I mean, because you got it down to the science, and you got the, uh, and you have the the uh, supplement that helps you. Let me ask you a, a serious question about cannabis in the league that you loved. How much progress do you think the NFL substance abuse policy has made since you were in the league, and how much further does that policy need to go? <laughs> and how much how much do you think professional sports league substance abuse policies will change once cannabis is legalized federally? Uh, well, it's changed a bunch since I was in the league. I mean, it, it was, it was so, it was so draconian. Like the whole, when I was in the league, the whole point of the, of the system was to catch guys. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it, it turned into a cat and mouse chase who can get away with what, and that doesn't feel good. And, and I think the first thing they did that was great is they raised the, the cutoff of, of, uh, THC metabolites from 0.15 nanograms per milliliter, which is crazy, all the way up to, to 0.5. And if it was at 0.5 when I was playing, I, I wouldn't have failed the test. So that, that's already, you know, positive. And I think just the, the fact that they're changing their attitude about cannabis and they've decided they're not going to suspend any, any players, that's a, a step in the right direction. But they need to, like, just take cannabis completely off of it, you know? And I think if someone has, has Ish, substance abuse issues you're not going to see it just in their urine look at their behavior right and it's not in, in scapegoating and blaming things on substances i think we need to get beyond that you know maybe we should look at the people using the substances and so you know punishing people that just needs to stop it, it's it's ridiculous but we're getting there we're getting there how, how much of your career was taken away i mean i look at look you're one of the best running backs to ever touch the field josh gordon could be I mean he has all the tools to be and he can't stay on the field because of some I mean I think there are some other issues as well but marijuana being the overwhelming issue how has the image or the perception of the athlete and cannabis changed and how much do you think that draconian policy has taken away from the career of Ricky Williams and somebody like Josh Gordon well here's part of the issue you know because if we're going to specify and say my football career Yes, it's probably taken a couple of the years off my football career. But if we're going to say career and big career as far as my life, it's added tons of quality to my life. And I yeah. think sometimes we have to make those decisions. And I think the number one assumption is that if someone is a good athlete, that means that's what they're supposed to do. What, are, you know, well, I, I, but, but so in the, in the larger scheme of life, I think the whole point of what I was speaking of spirituality is not, is making sure that all of your life is good. And I think one of the biggest issues I had was football was great, but every other part of my life was, was crap. And for me, I was like, this is not working. I need to do something to start to change this. And so I, I think, you know, looking more holistically at, at who athletes are, where, you know, we're not chess pieces, you know, we're not video game pieces that are just go, supposed to go out there and run people over, that we're human beings that have a whole life to live. And I think when we start looking at professional athletes that way as, okay, they're professional athletes, but they're human beings also. And I think this is this is part of it. I think part of the stigma around, at least for me, around cannabis is when I got in the drug program, the way that the NFL doctors and the way that they looked at me and treated me was like I was this this chess piece that was in danger of of getting, you know, getting in trouble and losing the game. So their job was to fix me, not looking at me as a human being who was a, a curious philosophical human being who's using cannabis to explore 
to explore consciousness, then we can have a conversation, right? And to me, the, the, the big thing for me is let's look at athletes and that's including us ourselves as human beings. And so we can put our, our careers, our, the game that we love into some context that's healthy. That makes perfect sense. In a perfect world, how would you incorporate cannabis into the wellness and recovery reg, uh, regimen of professional athletes? Well, first of all, it's, it's, a personal, it's a personal choice but I would, if, you know, if I was a head coach and I had, you know, my, my players came to me and said, Hey, you know, how should we use this? Um, and have a, I'd have a personal conversation with each of them and see like, what, like, where are you in your life? And like, where do you need help? And where do you need guidance? And then, it, then we, it's like a, a physician, right? You go to a physician and they say, you say, this is what's wrong with me, or this is what I need help with. And then they know what to do. So it's a personal conversation of where would you like to expand? Where are you stuck in your life? And then we see, okay, now as you consume cannabis, let's start to think about those areas of your life where you're stuck and see and see what comes up. And that's that's dope uh, to you to no pun intended there. That's 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 a very <laughs> amazing way to to analyze and look at life. Let's talk about Heisman. What is Heisman? Heisman is a brand, you know, and and it is to me, it's, it's, it's a, it's a real brand, you know? So, so many times, especially in the cannabis space, you see these brands and they're trying to, to build a story and they're trying to sell you something. Right. And for us, it's really a brand. And, and the beautiful thing is we don't have to really try to sell anything. Right. It, to us, it's more of an invitation. It's an invitation to, to live a lifestyle where being high is not a negative thing. Okay. Where it's a positive thing when you can lift yourself up when you can raise your vibration and see the whole picture and, and, and gain perspective that's not something to be shamed that's not something to be ashamed of that's not something to be to be negative okay and so it's really about changing the conversation about how can cannabis and other mind altering substance contribute to, to us achieving our goals and, and being happier i'm all about being happy. i want more people to be happy for folks who aren't cannabis users like yourself and, and I, what is sativa, what is indica, and what is hybrid, and what makes your Heisman strands unique? Yeah, so, so you know, it's, it's language. That's the first thing they are, is language, words that are used to try to describe something. And the way they've been, they've been used is to describe generally the effects, okay? And, and the way to break it down is the convention that we're using at Heisman, okay? So we're, we're a cannabis and sports lifestyle brand. And so what we're calling, uh, you know, one, one uh, group of, of cultivars or strains is we're calling it pregame, okay? This is what people call sativa. And the idea is that the energy of a, of a typical sativa strain, it's more mental, okay? It's going to get your mind going, right? So this idea of, you know, you got something to do and you're kind of sluggish and you want to get up, right? This is, this is where sativa will help. But conversely, right? You know, you're anxious already, and you're already up in your head. Okay, uh-uh, don't, 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 don't do the sativa, right? Because it'll, it'll push you more, and you might get a little bit anxious. Okay, and then what people call indica. Okay, the, the, the terminology they use is in the couch, right? And it's really more <laughs> it, of a. It, it has put me in the couch. I usually take it before I fly from, from California back home, and that, that, uh, they actually had to wake me up on a flight before. Yes. <laughs> and to me, the way I look at it, it's more about being in your body, you know, getting, getting in your body. You know, you, you sit in the couch and you can feel like the couch on your leg, you know, you can feel like you're in, you're in your body. So it's great for yoga. Okay. It's great for spending time in nature where you really, you know, it's great for before a massage. It's great for sleep. Okay. Um, and then, you know, kind of the hybrid is kind of a cross where it's, it, you know, kind of in your body, kind of in your head. Okay. And again, these are generalized terms, but they're useful, right? They're useful in, in helping people understand, you know, what kind of cultivars or strains are going to work for me at any given time. And I think this is where we're moving the more, more sophisticated cannabis use is really it's a tool. Okay. Right. And, and there's some tools that are great for things and there's some tools that aren't. And as people start to educate themselves and understand what cannabis can do for them, then then they can use it in, in more holistic and, and healthy ways. The brand is starting with pre-rolls and apparels, but do you envision expanding the edibles, infused products and topicals? And where do you envision this brand going? Well, it, it's a it's a brand and it's a lifestyle brand. And so so, yes, I mean, you know, we want to stay focused and, you know, my main form of consumption is flour. So we're staying focused, but definitely we're gonna expand in cannabis 
products, but also where it's much bigger than that. You know, what I'm most excited about is our is our our consumption lounge idea. And oh man, that's I, that's I, gonna I, be I, amazing. Right? Sports themed consumption lounges. You know, it's it's the way I think it's the way it's the wave of the future. But th there's so many things we can do with this brand, and this is what's so exciting about it because. For, for most of my life, pretty much all of my life, cannabis and sports have been something that's separated. You know, when you're growing up playing sports, your coaches tell you, if you smoke weed, we're going to run you off. Or if we catch you smoking, you're a loser. OK, this is this was the language that athletes have, have been dealing with. And then when you watch television, you see your favorite athletes getting in trouble and getting suspended. So only negative connotations. Right. We're, we're changing that. And so as people are starting to be more honest, Okay, about their cannabis use and it's and they can come out in the open and be more real. Okay, here's a brand that's for you, right? The ability to stop hiding who you are. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're producing an end product in your pre-rolls, but you ultimately need dispensaries to help carry your product. Talk about how cannabis ends up on dispensary shelves and what states will Heisman be available in and when do you anticipate it being available? Yeah, so we're we're launching in California this week. Uh, we're launching in Oregon next month, and then we're launching in Nevada in December. Okay, so those are our three three states we have on deck for for this um, year. And next year we plan to add three to six more, depending on on how it goes. You know, we're we're trying to control our growth and our spread, but everyone wants to be to work with us, and so we're you know we're we're having to negotiate that. In our specific business model is we're not cultivators we're not growing you know we are we're a brand and so for us i feel what what i'm the value i'm offering to to people that that vibe with this brand is just i've been in this game for a long time and so as far as bringing quality product to the market you know the team that i built we're able to do that so we go in each state and we find cultivators right and this is the fun part right i get to i get to test all the product we find, <laughs> We find cultivators that 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 are are growing really quality flower, and that's up to our par, and that we that we resonate with, that we enjoy doing business with, and then from there, in that partnership, then we we either distribute or we sell ourselves to dispensaries, and that and that's how it gets on the shelf, is we partner with cultivators, and then together we partner with dis distributors or different retail locations, and uh, we get our flower on the shelf. Man, you're gonna be getting a, you're gonna be getting an email from me. This is one of the best parts about this this gig I have because I uh, I am a partial owner of a few dispensaries called Hastoria with Raekwon the chef. We're in Oregon yeah. right now, and we are we are looking to build in New Jersey, and we grow about forty to fifty pounds through Citizen Grown, which is our sister company in Oklahoma, and we kind of have a vertical integration. But we want Heisman on our shelves, so we're gonna reach out to you and your team to see how we make that happen. And you can come test all of our product because that's the best part of this gig some days. Of course, of course. Uh, before we go, before I let you go, the last question I have for you is, well, I got one football question, but one more Heisman question. I got to talk about equity and representation in the cannabis industry. Can you talk about what it takes to get into this industry and policymakers which are listening to this podcast, there are some, um, what should they be doing to ensure that more black entrepreneurs in particular are able to partake in this industry, given the cost that our community paid in the war on drugs? Yeah, this is a, this is a big question. And, and it's funny. So I was just, uh, I was just in Vegas for MJ BizCon and meetings with, you know, everybody in the industry was in Vegas. And the question that came up in every single meeting is what are you guys doing for social equity? What are you guys doing for social equity? You know, and it's funny because you can tell, you can tell it's just like one of those questions that you just have to ask now, because not many of them are talking to people that look like me. And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I doing for social equity? I am social equity. What are you doing for me? No, um, but, <laughs> but, but, but seriously, it's, it's, it's a positive thing, but you know, and my, my concern that is, is that it's just a fad, you know, that it's just a fad, but but right now, as there's new legislation being built, is it's so refreshing to see that is being built into the laws that that they're at least thinking about it. They're at least thinking about it. And and I think what can people do that that want to get in is is research because right now there are there are so many social equity programs. If you have the courage and the determination to just look into it, 
there's there's opportunities. And I, the thing that I think no one is talking about is there's opportunities and opportunity is like a door, but you have to have what it takes to walk through that door. And what I've found, you know, in my experience is I've had to educate myself on so many things that I, I know nothing about, you know? And, and I, I think what's beautiful about this, and this is my story, is this is the first time I've been motivated to actually learn about business, yeah, right? And so is, is really the biggest thing is educate yourself. That's the biggest thing you can do. And right now with the internet is, is you can do it. And so I would say just Google social, social equity programs in cannabis because you might have to move states, but if you do some research, you're gonna find there's opportunities out there. It's just about people knowing about them and then and then going, having the courage and the belief in themselves to go for it. One of my last two questions, how good is that running back from Texas y'all got down there this year? He's special. I mean, you know, he's, he's one of those athletes that is just once every two, 20 years, you know, there was Earl, oh, no. 20 years later I came and, and, and Bajan's here now. So he, I'm excited to see what, to see where, where the season ends up, but how his career ends up, because he's good enough to win the Heisman Trophy. He just he just has to have the team to to be have good. Have some success. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, I mean, it takes a little luck and some wins and a lot of things in between. Uh, who wins the Super Bowl this year? Last question. Do you still follow the NFL? I, I watch Monday morning highlights. <laughs> Fair enough. Who wins the Super Bowl? That's too early to tell right now. It's too early to tell. Ask me again in three weeks, okay? Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. I, I, I just find it intriguing that the leaders in the AFC are the Cincinnati Bengals and the leaders in the NFC are the Arizona Cardinals. Who would have ever guessed that at the beginning of the season? And I promise neither of them is going to win the Super Bowl. That's, that's, what I, that's what I could tell you. Oh, all right. I, I will I'm take – all sure. right, well, we, we, will, we will meet in somebody's dispensary. <laughs> and the I will take the Cardinals and the Bengals, and you can have the field, and the loser has to pay for the product. Bet. <laughs> All right, bet. Thank you so much, Ricky Williams, for joining the Bakari Sellers podcast. It was a pleasure, my brother. Be safe and be easy. Thank you.